forgive my voice cracking a little bit, but the adrenaline and the emotion is still high. Um, there were a number of congressmen and congressional staffers who help us uh, lying on the ground. Uh, one of them uh, was wounded uh, in the leg, took off my belt, and uh, myself and another congressman, I don't remember who, uh, applied a tourniquet to try to uh, slow down the bleeding. That was a man who needs no forgiveness, uh, Alabama Congressman Mo Brooks. He was talking to us live just moments after the worst day of his life, a day in which he showed what we would all hope we would do at our best in a moment of crisis. He was on that field, part of the GOP baseball team practicing when that madman came and tried to gun them down. The game went on. It was played last night. Republicans and Democrats united on bended knee, praying for House GOP whip Steve Scalise. He remains in the hospital in critical condition at a Washington hospital. His doctors do say he made some improvement after the second round of surgeries. Congressman Mo Brooks played in that game, joins us now. Congressman, as uh, we've said to you before, we want to thank you, not just for helping us understand those first moments, but for doing what you did for your fellow man on that field. How are you doing this morning? Um, I'm better. I uh, got a good night's sleep uh, last night. Did not do so well uh, the previous evening. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank you, Chris, and you, Allison. Uh, Y'all didn't have to do this, but after uh, the events of Wednesday, uh, you got in touch with me either by a text or a telephone call. And I want you to know that those off-air uh, communications, uh, expressions of sympathy, uh, were very much appreciated. Well, Congressman, I can't tell you how many people uh, around the country have come up to us both and tell us, uh, to tell us how gripped they were by your vivid and clear-headed recall of the moments of that ambush and the attack. So what, what have these next 48 hours been like for you? Well, um, we tried to play a baseball game last night. Uh, a lot of bipartisanship before the game. Uh, we went from the first base uh, to the third base position, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, uh, to try to communicate to the American people that while we fight vigorously in the House floor and the Senate floor, we're friends outside of that political arena. Uh, I will add that uh, as I was standing there on the, uh, in the group from first to third base, uh, I saw David uh, Bailey He's the Capitol Police officer uh, on crutches uh, near the first, uh, third base uh, dugout, and something compelled me to go over there, and I asked him if I could hug him. Uh, he said yes, and I'll always remember him and the sacrifice, uh, the courage that he showed uh, on behalf of uh, the members of the United States Congress and our staffs and, and the other people who were there. Uh, the bipartisanship before the game was wonderful, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, once that first pitch was thrown, the bipartisan uh, chip ended. The Democrats <laughs> just abused us. Uh, Cedric Richmond, he had his curveball. It was, it was on. Uh, they were hitting ropes uh, off of our pitchers. Our fielding was not as good as it should have been, and, and hence it was an 11-2 and two, uh, uh, beating. Uh, I asked before the game if the Democrats would a little bit, be a little bit easy on us. Uh, they assured us that they would be, but by golly. Once that first pitch was thrown, that bipartisanship was gone. Well, there should be an investigation into whether or not he was scuffing the ball. Everybody thinks the curve was breaking a little bit too much uh, oh, last night. Oh, it was a night. heck of a pitch. But the trophy didn't go to the Democrats. Where did it go? Well, now, that's a two-edged sword. Uh, the Democrats uh, were kind enough to uh, return. Normally, the, the winning team keeps the trophy for a year, and it's the manager has it in his office. And the Democrats uh, decided to give the, uh, this year's trophy to the Republicans and, and Steve Scalise. And that's a, a very kind thought in, on the one hand. But on the other hand, we now have in our offices a year-long reminder of the thrashing <laughs> we got last night from the Democrats. So I'm glad it's not in my office. I wouldn't want to be looking at that and thinking 11 to 2 beating for a whole year. Very clever of the Democrats to keep that lorded over you. But, Congressman, Everyone wants to turn the page on yes. the toxic environment in Capitol Hill and beyond and across the country. And obviously to somehow sustain this spirit of love and kindness, what is the answer to doing that? 
Well, I, it, we've got to communicate better to the American people to help them understand that in a republic, vigorous debate is a part of the process. That does not mean that you physically hate the other person, even though you're at odds on any particular issue. Now, there are plenty of issues where we agree. Uh, by way of example, over the last session of Congress, we passed over 500 bills through the House of Representatives, the majority of which was bipartisan. Now, of course, that doesn't get the kind of media coverage because the clash uh, creates uh, more interest uh, than does the agreement. Uh, but I hope the American people will please, please understand that while we have these vigorous debates and, and while strong words are often used to express the positions that we hold, uh, after we have been in that arena, we can go out and have lunch together. Uh, our spouses and, and the uh, congressmen can go on trips together and we can have really good time. So you, you've got two different personalities and overall, though, the relationship between the Republicans and the Democrats is, is quite, quite good on a social level and on a personal level. Now, granted, we have disagreements on the policy issues, and we've, got, we've just got to get the American people to understand that this vigorous discourse is a part of having a republic, and it's preserved us well and done us well as a country now for over 230 years.